you know, it's not like people before me thought, didn't realize that re reusability was a thing. Werner von Braun was actually big on reusability. He really wanted to push reusability design, but uh, thus far, for whatever reason, uh, no rocket organization has been able to execute on reusability until SpaceX. Hey guys, so look at the sign behind me. I'm here in front of Stargate, which is of course the Starbase headquarters. And I just spoke with Elon Musk about this incredible day here down in South Texas, the fourth flight of Starship, a truly historic day. We got our mics, we got the phone, good old iPhone, and we are trying to pick which questions we have a few questions oh hey, so nice to meet you, nice to meet you. formally hi hi <laughs> okay how are you feeling after today's flight four uh great i think uh the social performs performed very well and uh the spacex team done an incredible job talk about the views from starlink i want to give a shout out to starlink it powered my live stream and obviously the three plus million people who watched on x yeah uh this we, we actually had, I think, 16 video feeds or thereabouts from Starlink, uh, some of which were external, m most of which were internal, just looking at the internal systems for uh, kind of debugging issues. Uh, and yeah, we had uh, con uh, almost continuous uh, Starlink uh, coverage. Um, for the next flight, we're making some adjustments to Starlink, so we'll actually have uh, completely continuous the entire way. I'm sure everyone at home would love that. Would you say that fourth time is the charm maybe for SpaceX as we look at Falcon 1's history? Uh, the fourth launch is certainly great. I mean, third launch was, was solid too. I mean, we did make it uh, to orbit. Um, by normal standards, that would be uh, a success on the third launch. Uh, for this launch, we, we hit two key reusability milestones, which was having the booster boost back um, to a precise location and uh, execute a landing burn and land softly in the water, which it did, um, and getting the ship to go all the way through um, the super high heating of reentry, where it's coming in like a meteor, um, and, uh, and then maintain control subsonically and uh, land in a pretty so preci precise location. Uh, well, it was technically six kilometers off geographically, but it was able to, the ship was able to maintain control and then relight the, the three uh, Raptor engines for for a for, for landing, so that's uh, a, a super su successful day. Is, um, yeah. Uh, as you were watching, people are saying on X the little flap that could. What, what, what was going through your mind? I was surprised that the flap lasted so long. So it's uh, you know because it's when, once the heat shield tiles are gone, the uh, you, you really just have um, bare steel, which is mostly the sort of uh, SX-300 uh, steel alloy. And uh, it, was, it was actually quite surprising how well the steel uh, held up uh, despite the extreme heating. Yeah. So I, I, I thought the flap would fail uh, because it, it's not supposed to be able to survive, but it did. I think a lot of us were surprised. Um, does that validate your choice to use stainless steel? Um, yeah, absolutely. If, if, if we'd used uh, carbon fiber or aluminum, they, they both would have failed due to high heating. Now, we saw you post on X that maybe Flight 5 you'll attempt to catch. How, what do you think is the likelihood of that? Well, I, I need to regroup with the team and confirm that there aren't any other known issues. But I think uh, g given that the booster came back, uh, came to a precise location, came to uh, potentially zero velocity landing uh, on the ocean, I, I, think we, uh, I think we should probably try to catch it with the tower arms on the next flight. Um, absolutely. I was lucky enough to take a tour of Starbase, and it's amazing that you guys are able to manage construction and production at the same time. Tell me about the team down here at SpaceX. Yeah, well, we've always done, uh, we've been doing continuous construction of the factory and the launch site while belt doing development of the rocket. That's been the case, uh, you know, ever since we, we came out here. Um, I mean, for three years, uh, this was my primary location primary residence. I lived here kind of building up uh, the Starbase uh, factory and, and launch site uh, from basically nothing, from just being a sandbar. Um, and, uh, and we're just trying to figure out how to, deal, how to, how to work with uh, stainless steel as opposed to aluminum, lithium, and carbon, and uh, how to deal with uh, methane as a cryogenic fuel instead of uh, kerosene or refined jet fuel. So. Um, yeah, so it's really always been a case of uh, 
build, build the factory, build the launch site, and keep developing the rocket. And if people have never been down to Starbase, this is much more than a factory. You're trying to maybe build out a city. Can you tell me more about uh, your vision? So, uh, a city would be a strong word, but okay. a, 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 maybe a small town. Does having a young workforce benefit SpaceX by not having preconceived notions? Uh, well, we, we have people that range from, you know, sort of 70 to 18. So it's a, it's really a wide range. I, I, don't, I don't know about... Um, I mean, to, if, really, it's a, a question of mindset. Is somebody gung ho about the future and wanting to drive advanced technology as fast as possible? That can be true at, at any age. What kinds of missions do you think SpaceX could accept that will act as development stepping stones towards Mars? Well, we're, we're seeing the development stepping stones to Mars here, which is the, the, the fundamental breakthrough that is needed for life to become multiplanetary is uh, a, a fully and rapidly reusable rocket. So that means that the boost stage and the, sh uh, and the upper stage or ship uh, must both come back to the launch site and be immediately able to fly again with no, no refurbishment. This has never been accomplished. The closest that anyone's ever gone is, is Falcon 9, where the booster comes back and is, is quickly available for flight in really less than a week. Um, and the, uh, the fairing or nose cone is also uh, refurbished for flight. The only thing that's lost is the upper stage. Um, so in terms of, so Falcon 9 is the first rocket ever to demonstrate commercially feasible uh, reusability. In fact, re or another way of saying it is reusability that actually mattered mm -hmm. and was useful. Right. Um, now, Falcon 9 does still, we lose the upper stage. Um, so Falcon 9 is about 80% reusable, <clears throat> but it, it, it's, it's also not rapidly reusable in terms of enabling immediate reflight. Um, so with Starship, the whole thing will be reusable and, and it's designed for immediate reflight. That's, that's a very profound thing. That is the fundamental thing that is necessary to make life multiplanetary. Uh, there is, I, I would put everything else in the uh, category of, 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 of being really a different order of magnitude or difficulty. Uh, the, uh, you know, I, I, like I don't think it will be very difficult to, to survive on Mars, frankly. I think it'll, from a technology challenge standpoint, that is, that is small compared to full and rapid reusability. Um, we live on a planet with a deep gravity well and a thick atmosphere. Uh, this makes full reusability extremely difficult. If gravity was even 10% lower, it would be easy. And if it was 10% higher, it would be impossible. So, uh, you know, we, it, it's not as though uh, prior rocket designers, um, you know, it's not like people before me thought, didn't realize that re reusability was a thing. Werner von Braun was actually big on reusability. He really wanted to push reusability design. Um, and he was a brilliant guy. Um, and, um, and he had many sort of design ideas for that, as did others. Uh, but uh, thus far, for whatever reason, uh, no rocket organization has been able to execute on reusability until SpaceX. Um, and Starship is the first rocket design where uh, full and rapid reusability is, in fact, possible. Because um, what, what this does is drop the cost of space transport by at least a hundredfold, maybe a thousandfold. So it's a gigantic difference, uh, as it would be for any mode of transport. If it was cars, horses, mm -hmm. bicycles, airplanes, imagine if you needed to get a new airplane with every flight. Right. Uh, it, that air flight would be impossible for almost anyone. One thing that never ceases to amaze me is there's not enough people that really know what's going on with Starship and why is it important to generate public interest? It's not, it's not I mean, I, I do think we want the public on our side and supportive, but we're not trying to maximize public awareness. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, 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 you know, a large portion of the public is aware of it. And I think when we start, taking astronauts to the moon, and especially Mars, it will be, everyone on Earth will know about it. At what point do you think it would be safe for people to bring or have children on Mars? Uh, well, I think you, you can have children on Mars as soon as you're able to. Um, I wouldn't bring children initially because it's dangerous. The first flights may not succeed. Um, it's a hazardous environment, so, um, but I think within, I don't know, Less than 10 years of the initial landings, I would expect that it's safe to bring kids. 
Do you think that you'll go to Mars in your lifetime? It depends. If I, if I live long enough, um, then yes. I just want to say that I am so incredibly grateful for Elon Musk taking some time to talk to me on the same day of IFT4. It was already such an amazingly successful day with the launch that we witnessed and then to be able to talk to Elon on top of it was really just the icing on the cake. I have been working for a very long time to get an interview like this. So if you would like to support my work, it really goes a long way as this is my full-time job and the revenue can be very inconsistent. I thought about breaking this up into many different clips and you might see some shorts but i just wanted to give you the full starship recap from elon the day after the starship launch so hopefully you appreciate it and i just can't express how grateful i am for elon making time to talk to me and of course so incredibly proud of the spacex team humanity has a bright future thanks to the starship program and what spacex is doing making the world's first fully reusable rocket we are well on our way and it is so amazing to see it unfold in person i've been lucky enough to cover all four launches now from the roof of margaritaville and to talk to elon on one of the launch days I, I don't even know if I'm dreaming, so um, I might make an additional video about this experience, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please share it if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I am feeling very excited to talk to Elon. I've been following the Starship program now since 2021, actually on the ground here, and so um, it's actually very surreal, and to be doing it on such a successful flight day for IFT4 is kind of the best time to do it. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm really excited to share this moment in history.